Greetings, my fellow PSP heads, and welcome to the PSP Network, where we celebrate the greatest handheld of all time. Now, this was my newest PSP to my two collection, um, and this is a very special PSP to me because it is my first PSP that I've ever worked on, and I'm going to tell the story of how this PSP came to be in my possession, and uh, what was the process of having to rebuild and revive this PSP. So I'm going to tell you today my PSP revival story. So I started off the channel with the blue PSP 1000, as you guys know, and uh, basically I wanted something that was a little bit lighter because the PSP 1000 is really, really premium. It's heavy, it feels like a console, but it had a case on it and I bought a camera with the PSP and every time I wanted to use the camera, I had to take the case off of it. So that was one of the bad things about having the camera or the case. I wanted to get another PSP where I can take around personally and take videos and photos and all that such thing. So. I looked on Facebook Marketplace, and I was wanting to get a PSP 2000, actually. I was looking for the Star Wars Darth Vader PSP version, and I happened to come across this PSP on Facebook Marketplace, and it cost around $35. So I messaged the seller, and um, it was a little difficult to get a hold of her for a few days because I guess she was busy, but um, I know how fast these things go. And I looked at the PSP, there was just a bunch of grum and dirt all over it, but I figured I can do a little TLC on it to see if I can repair it or anything like that, see if I can challenge myself to revive a PSP. She finally replied and she was, I was asking her, what's the condition, all this stuff. She said it was in good condition, it just needs a little TLC, and I was like, yeah, I can see that. Um, and it was disclosed in the description that there wasn't any battery so i was like okay well i can meet you and see if we can find a plug-in outlet because i have a charger so i met this person at a publix and we were talking and stuff like that and she said that this psp was found in an abandoned house so i thought that was very fascinating so it's like okay cool so i'm going to be able to literally bring something back from the dead which is you know take it as you will but no what I did then was, okay, I told her, I was like, all right, well, I have my PSP charger. Let's go see if we can find a plug-in outlet that will work. So we found a plug-in outlet. I turned it on and it worked. It turned on, which was, you know, that's a big plus. Um, and the UMD drive looked okay. Um, but the screen, um, you can tell it had some sort of water damage or like light damage to it. So, I mean... Uh, probably where it was placed she said that the house was abandoned for three years so I'm sure that this the screen on the PSP was probably getting some light damage from the rays coming through the window so I was like okay that's no problem because you can buy any screen you want um, on you know Amazon or eBay and stuff like that so when I got home from that um, I figured I would order the new screen for it, which is, you know, totally fine. I, I wanted to challenge myself to see if I can actually revive the system. So the good thing was, is that it turned on. One of the main things about a PSP is trying your best to keep all the original parts, because when you buy these parts off of Amazon and stuff like that, they may not fit properly or they may not close properly and all that different stuff. So. Um, it was just good. The front-facing screen wasn't scratched up. Um, there was, like, markings on here and stuff. It all cleaned up after I rubbed the dirt and grime off. It was just very nice that uh, it was all kind of intact. So the next thing I did was order the screen, and eventually it came in. So my first challenge was actually opening up the system and learning how to replace a screen. So... There was a bunch of levers and, you know, screws and stuff like that. And I've opened up the PSP 1000 before. So uh, it wasn't necessarily a challenge for me to open up the, P the PSP 2K, but it was one thing to um, replace the screen because there was different levers and all that stuff. So I put it on and also there was this little fabric around the screen that prevented any dust and grime from getting into the screen, between the screens. So you wouldn't have like little 
you know, smudges of little, little, little specks of dirt inside of it, which is like a pet peeve of mine. I don't like doing that. So uh, it took a while to replace that fabric and like put it on the screen and all that stuff. So eventually I got it on. Eventually I got the screen on um, and that's and it worked perfectly. Um, so there wasn't any markings on the screen. So that was one step one done. It was absolutely great to see uh, that come together. The second thing was that I had to do was you see this black, uh, you know, joystick. It was a white joystick, but it was absolutely dirty. So um, I looked on videos of, you know, how to clean it. I tried to clean it with rubbing alcohol. Um, I, that didn't work. So what I did was order another joist, black joystick cap on Amazon because I kind of wanted to have the joystick match the Darth Vader. So it came in, replaced that, and it looked absolutely wonderful. But then I later discovered when, when I actually bought some like UMD games and movies and stuff like that, the UMD wasn't working. So that was the next challenge for me was to, okay, now I got to really open the system up and see if I can try to replace the UMD. Now, I know that you can download games and stuff like that onto the system, which is totally fine by any means, but it's just better to have a fully functional system rather than not. I didn't buy any system. There was actually a donor PSP given to me uh, by uh, a guy called Any Life that he follows me on TikTok, and uh, we were com communicating back and forth because I was really helping him out with his jailbreaking process, and he was like, hey, man, you know, just for your troubles, I'm going to give this to you, and I was like, wow, this is very... Uh, selfless and I and I really thanked him for that and uh, yeah, the package came with some games and stuff like that and it came with a 2k PSP it just so happened to be a 2k PSP so I tried to turn that on but the the system would not turn on so I rolled the dice and hoped for the best to see if the UMD drive works so what I did next was um, I opened the system again and there was different levers that were a little bit more higher intensive uh, to, to replace. So um, eventually that was, the UMD drive was definitely a hard part about switching process. So I finally got the new UMD drive to go into the system, plugged it up to the motherboard, uh, plugged the screen up to the motherboard. Um, and all that stuff closed it properly. And I finally, finally had it working, which was absolutely amazing. Um, now, uh, the, the, it, the, the UMD drive that came with the old, the other 2K that was donated to me, um, was very sensitive. So the, the interesting thing was in this process is that, uh, the UMD drive is questionable on playing any PSP games onto the system, but it plays movies and TV like a charm. So uh, I had a Family Guide disc that I popped into this PSP. It worked amazing. I also had another movie called Ultraviolet, and I uh, I popped that in. And now I watch PSP on the back of my porch now since that it's cold outside. And uh, that was just one of the cool things is... Um, it was, it was, it was basically exclusive because, um, I didn't mind UMD games not working on the system because I can just download them. However, it was so cool that I can actually watch movies and TV shows and, um, you know, possibly build the collection in the future. So I figured that was really, really cool to have now that I have a fully functional working PSP and it, 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 it and you, as you can see, it's just really, really, really in good condition. As you can see here, I did some TLC on it. And, um, you know, it. I don't want to touch it when it's playing the disc because if I, like, nudge the back, it closes properly and everything. Nothing's wrong. But if I, like, press it in any way, um, it, it, ha it restarts the system. So um, the good thing is, is that if I leave it be, it plays the movie flawlessly. I watched many shows and movies on this thing, so... Um, I'm, I'm going to build my collection of, you know, visual content more in the future, but um, it, that's just my story. I am not an expert by any means when it comes to PSP repairing or buying guides or anything like that. I just wanted to challenge myself because the reason why I wanted to get this PSP was because I wanted to create more outdoor content when it came to the PSP camera. I wanted to have more of an outdoor PSP. The 1K is more of an indoor home body system. And the 2K was more of, uh, you know, outdoor content, 
PSP camera stuff, something that I'm not afraid to break, if that makes sense. So, um, I mean, obviously I'm gonna take care of my systems no matter what, but it's good to have um, just a backup system. And this one was the perfect one because the 2K, as some of you may know, is lighter than the 1K. So I didn't mind. Um, the 1K was is, is more of a system that I'd rather keep inside. That's just me. Not to mention all the parts work and everything works perfectly. I'd rather not take that out into public and risk breaking it weather. Because this thing, when, before I was even filming for live, it took a fall and I thought it was broken, but it can, it can take a hit. Uh, luckily it fell on its back, but it's a lot lighter than the 1K. So uh, that's just something to consider if you're looking for like a PSP 2000 or 3000. They're a lot lighter than the 1K. I like the 1K better personally because it's more of a personal PSP. Um, it's just more premium feel, it's heavier, but I love the 2K as well because it's so much lighter. It's just more outdoor friendly. So you can carry it in your pocket and don't even feel like it's there. But anyway, that is my whole process, and um, you know, it was it was a challenge, and I was, you know, quite honestly, very proud of myself for not knowing anything about refurbishing a PSP or reviving a PSP, literally, uh, without like three years of use, or God knows how long it's been since this system was turned on, and it's just due to the fact that I revived the system from being like literally almost two decades old it's just something like technology was just made better back in the day i swear like te technology today is less it's more prone to break rather than the, the the things that were made back then like the psp so um yes that was my process it was stressful but it can be done especially by someone who hasn't done this before. It may take a while, but you just have to be patient with it. So I recommend um, if you're repairing any PSPs or refurbishing them, you have to look up the YouTube videos in order to do so. So um, I have a video about screen replacement and I also had a video about the UMD replacement on my TikTok. So you go ahead and go check those out. But yes, this is my PSP revival story. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you guys are more um, inspired to um, maybe go out and buy these systems for a bargain that may or may not be working and then you can just revive them yourself it's just you can flip these systems for a big profit um, i bought this for 35 dollars. i may be able to sell it for 250 if i'm lucky you know what i mean so i mean because it's a really good psp i'm not looking to sell it anytime soon but it's just good to know that i can sell it for a higher higher profit with all the work and um, blood, sweat, and tears that I've put into something like this. Uh, but yeah, no, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe to the channel and go ahead and share any PSP content from my channel to any of your friends who enjoy PSP stuff. Um, and there is a Discord that is available for the PSP network. Come along, introduce yourself. We talk everything PSP and we would absolutely love to have you. And with all said and done, guys, I will see you in the next video. Peace out.